and welcome to a bonus episode of The Chris Haas Show. I'm Chris Haas. Thank you so much for tuning in. And a very special thanks to those of you that have liked and subscribed to my YouTube channel. If you haven't, please go ahead and do so. Jump over there and click the bell. You can also find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So today's episode, we're going to talk about the importance of working with our vendors. And the reason why I'm doing this episode now and the reason why I brought this up at this time was in light of the NADA conference that's going on as we're speaking now. So I've noticed several negative posts in the past days blasting vendors and industry experts. And to be quite honest, they don't bode well with me as a person that's worked in both capacities. I understand working in retail and I understand working as a representative of a service contract company. So we really do have to work with each other and understand the roles. So understanding and respecting positions. So from a vendor's point of view, by the way, absolutely hate that word, the vendor, the V word. Vendors, you know, you do not want to be looked at as that. You need to be looked at as a dealer partner and only you can change that with your abilities. So the vendor that walks into your dealership, keep in mind they have a sales quota just like you do. Just like the amount of vehicles that are being sold or being measured for salespeople, PVR is being measured for F&I managers. Those folks that walk into the dealership, they have a lot that, that they are responsible for as well. Not only is their pay plan usually based upon the amount of new dealers they're signing up, how many are turning into first time users, contract count, percent utilization, and so on. Also, a lot of folks are under the impression that all the vendors and bank reps that work, walk into the dealership are working Monday through Friday, nine to five. That's certainly not the case. You know, a lot of folks work the dealership's hours. I know I always work the dealer's hours. When I would get calls late at night or on the weekend, I would handle that and I would be there for my dealer partners when they needed me. And most good vendors out there are going to do that for you. So I could tell you from previous experiences as well, there's been situations when I've been in very high pressure situations. I can recall a situation when I was working for a service contract company. I was outside of a Honda store about to go in and make a sales call. And I had a terrible call with my supervisor before that. You know, we weren't in the greatest month. So it took everything I had to motivate myself and walk into that store. And as I'm walking in the dealership, you know, I noticed the salespeople that were hanging out in back, smoking their cigarettes and relaxing. And I'm looking at that and saying, oh man, geez, I wish I had an easy gig like that, right? So keep in mind, sometimes it is not always like you think. Keep in mind what vendors and representatives, what they do go through when they're coming into the dealership. So on that note too, vendors, keep in mind uh, when you're coming into the dealership, right? Decision makers, your dealer partners, general managers, dealer principals, they're usually very busy folks as well as GSMs, sales managers, F&I managers, everyone in the dealership usually is busy. Again, from my previous experience, I've been a GSM, I've worked in very high volume stores at the desk and in f and i I've been a director of a very high volume Honda dealership. And I understand it can be hard when folks walk in without an appointment for you to talk to them. I totally get it. When you're five deals deep and a bank rep comes in, it might not be the most ideal time. But we do have to work with them. It really is important. So vendors, be respectful. Know what time is best to come in. And that can really vary upon the type of store. In a franchise store, as we all very well know, it may not be the very best thing to walk in the last day of month, the month or the first or second day of the month as they're working on closeout. But that's not always the case. There's some GMs out there that maybe are not gonna be as hands-on as that point. They kind of just let their team run and they're handling more administrative work and they are able to talk at that point. So don't let that keep you away from making a sales call. Find out obviously you know, how your dealer or partner operates and work accordingly. And the independent dealers out there, it certainly is an issue walking in at the end of month with them. They're more than happy usually to chat with you at that point too. So 
Attempt to solidify an appointment, as I just mentioned beforehand. Um, cold calls, another word I don't like just as much as I don't like vendors, right? The V word. There really is no reason for a cold call. You can at least make it a warm call with the technology that we have at our fingertips today. We spoke about this back in episode one of the show. This is one of the very first things that I discussed when I was talking about folks getting job interviews and how you can do that. Well, it works the same way for vendors, right? You know, think about it. You're on a job interview to an extent when you're walking in to meet with a dealer partner or a GM. I know I always treated it that way. I always would treat it like a job interview and it always worked out well for me. So you can always look on the dealership's website. You can find out a very, very lot about them. You can find out the dealer's history. You can usually go to the meet our staff area and you can find out who's who in the dealership, who those key players are. You can connect with them on link, LinkedIn and find a little bit of, more about them so that you have some rapport when you're getting um, ready to meet with them. So again, we did discuss this back in episode one and I posted uh, about it on October 27th, 2020. Please go back and check that out where we spoke about some other great ways to, I wanna say circumvent and learn a little bit more about the dealer before you are making that cold call and you can make it a warm or a hot call and close it right up there. So back to dealership staff, you know, speak with your vendors. Other than the fact that those folks do have good solutions and can help you increase your revenue, keep in mind that they've just been in your competitor's dealership. Depending upon the time of day that they are coming in, you know, they may have been in three, four, maybe 10 dealers already at that point. Just as I mentioned earlier, how those folks have a quota, there's a certain amount of stops that they have to make per day. So if anything, right, you can learn about what's going on in your competition. So that's a great thing to chat with them about. Don't be rude. You know, let's think about this. Those folks are buyers too. How did they get to the dealership? They didn't just magically drop in front of the showroom. They drove there in a car, right? They're a potential buyer. Their family members and friends are potential buy, buy, buyers as well. You know, and just to expand on that, I won't mention any names, but there's a dealer out here in Arizona that I was treated horribly when I went into. So again, I would never say anything anything negative about them, but I would not buy a vehicle from them. And I certainly wouldn't recommend that anyone buys a vehicle from them. You know, I was mistreated terribly when I walked in by a sales manager in the dealership. And that's something that resonated with me and resonated with me, you know, to a point where now I feel like why even call on that group when they have people working there like that. So as I said, we all learn from each other. You know, even if you feel like maybe the vendors and reps are not as qualified or haven't been in the business as long as you have, just listen to what they have to say. We can bounce ideas off each other. We can correlate and collaborate with one another. So as I always leave off with every episode, I always like to say we learn from each other. Drop in the comments what you liked and what you didn't like about today's episode. Let me know what things you'd like to see a little bit different. We're going to have episode number five coming up here real soon. So please stay tuned for that. And if you have not liked and subscribed to my channel on YouTube, please go ahead and do so. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Chris Haas out.